how's it going guys it's been quite a long time since I've done any type of editing tutorial so I wanted to show you guys how I get the really glossy effect on some of my photos I'll show you an example from another photo during the shoot of like the very glossiness so here's the before and here's the after and I'm gonna show you guys how you get like this type of shine on your photos if you can you can already tell like in the before I started editing there is quite a lot of glossiness already on the model before I start doing the editing and all that jazz so this editing style really depends on you using very glossy shiny type of makeup on the models already otherwise if you're using a very matte finish on the models it's probably not going to work so I just wanted to let everyone know that this editing style heavily relies on the type of makeup already on the model so if you want to get this style you're going to need to use liquid highlighter like not matte foundation lip gloss on the eyelids like very glossy types of makeup if you're not a makeup artist and your models do their own makeup before the shoot i would just ask them if they would not use any matte products or if they would bring any liquid highlighter they have so that you can see, just add some during the shoot because I use quite a lot of liquid highlighter when it comes to working with my models and I don't use any powder in the makeup at all. So I have this photo here from an older shoot from last year. Since I'm in quarantine, I can't really do any photo shoots, which is a total bummer, but I think you guys will understand that it's better if I don't do any photo shoots for video's sake and just use older photos so that I can keep everyone around me safe. So I've already gone through and did the retouching on this photo and I'm just going to be showing you guys how I do the dodge and burn layer and the color grading and editing and all that just to make this highlight pop even more than it already is. So first we're going to make a dodge and burn layer and I'm going to do this and then so you're going to hit shift delete to get this and you're gonna fill it with 50% gray. It's gonna say soft light here, but it's probably not gonna work because it never works for me. Yours might work though. And then you're gonna go over to your blending mode and go over soft light. So it should look exactly like the photo with or without this layer. I'm actually going, before I do any of the dodge and burn, I'm going to make this layer first. And so I'm gonna make a new group and I'm gonna call this adjust because it's all my adjustments and color grading. What you're going to do first is you're going to make a curves layer and you're going to change this to lumosity. This is where you're going to get all that shine in the photo. So you're going to bring it up here and then you're going to bring it down to bring out that highlight even more. And I'm not going to go that extreme because that is a bit extreme. And you want to just play around with this depending on how sharp and how bright you want that highlight to look is really going to depend on you and the image see how it also changes the color a little bit to make it desaturated i like desaturation and you can already just tell that like this is crazy difference in that highlight it just brings out the whites in it so much. And obviously it's a bit too much. So we're gonna turn the opacity down. I normally take it to about 50% around there. And you can always do multiple layers of like this. I like to call this layer loom because it is lumosity. And then I just know that like this is my highlighting layer. And so now I can go and do my dodge and burn layer because now I know where those highlights are peaking the most and see it will also affect the jewelry as well which is really cool for you using a lot of really shiny jewelry it'll just make them pop even more and so i'm going to go over my dodge and burn tool i normally have it set to five percent just because i don't want to go too crazy and i don't want to adjust this too much because it is already like a very crazy highlight so i'm just going to go kind of in the middle of this and lighten it a bit just a tiny bit i don't want to go too crazy because if you go too crazy then it just looks really over the top in my opinion because i don't know i like to mainly just lighten the center of it to make the center of the highlight pop more and i'm going to do the same for here 
this one I might make a little crazier. And using this Lumosity layer will also help when you're dodging and burning to make something a lot lighter. It'll make it look a bit more natural than if you're using a lot of dodge and burning without doing this layer because it adds texture. And one thing I've noticed when doing dodge and burning, it kind of like blurs uh, the area you're lightening or darkening a little bit and just makes the colors look kind of weird sometimes. I'm also gonna go in and like fix some of these little inconsistencies over here. And then just add a little bit to the center of the nose. She has very nice like lush plump lips, but I will show you how to make them look even more lush and plump. So I'm gonna turn this up again a little bit and then make the brush smaller and then zoom in here quite a bit more. So what you want to do is see there's already all these highlights here because I've highlighted and glossed the crud out of her skin. I'm just going to make this part even bigger and even brighter as well as over here but I'm not going to touch this dark section right here. I'm going to just go right against the pink of the lip and right here where it's shiny in the little indent. I don't know what this part of your body is technically called, so if someone could tell me, that would be great. I'm also gonna darken right here just a little bit, just for some contrast. And then I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna turn this down a tiny, all right, not that tiny. I'm gonna make this like nine or eight, yeah, nine. And then I'm gonna make this a tiny bit bigger. And I'm going to darken right here with little brush strokes. And also go along up here and darken right here. And then do a little line right against this part of the lip. And right here as well. And then go right over this little highlight, right up in here. And then kind of a little line. I'm also going to darken this part just a tiny bit as well. And then under the lip as well to make it seem like the shadow is darker because her lip is standing out even more. So when you're doing the dodge and burn around the lips, you want to be really careful that you're not going to go overboard with this. Um, you just want to do a tiny bit and darken a little bit under here see and then lighten this up a little bit more because I think I went a little too dark right here uh, because if you go too dark especially on the top lip it'll kind of make it look like your model has like a little bit of a mustache if they have a mustache great but if they're a girl not great and you want to zoom out and make sure it looks realistic this is really just to make the lips look a little bit more plump than they already are, like they stick out just a bit. So just turn Dodge Up Burn the layer off and on. Just double check that it doesn't look crazy in any areas, especially around the lips. Like, you just want this to be darker. It'll give the illusion that her lip is sticking out a little bit further, so it looks like it's a little bit more plump. Nothing wrong with not having plump lips, but that's just kind of like what's in style right now so that's why I kind of make sure everyone's lips look a little bit more plump. It's not something you have to do, it's just something that I personally do. So next with the dodge and burn we're gonna go through and do the eyes and this is honestly like one of my favorite parts. So we're gonna turn it up to around like 14, 16-ish, somewhere around there and we're gonna lighten the whole eye including the color part. And I like to lighten this part a lot especially if they have darker eyes you're probably going to find that you're going to have to lighten um, I don't know what the term is. is the iris is that what the colored part is called someone correct me if I'm wrong I can't remember anatomy to save my life even though I used to be like a kinesiology major and psychology and all that jazz whatever okay <laughs> so we're gonna go to the other eye and do the same thing. And since this eye is in the darker part of her face, we don't want to lighten it like crazy. I might go overboard and I'm probably going to have to go back over and darken it later and that's fine. 
just know that you want this this eye should not be the same brightness as the other eye because it is in a shadow and you also don't want to get rid of this shadow so if you find you've gotten rid of it too much oh that's a bit dark you're going to have to like take this back down and fix that shadow because eyes are believe it or not they're spheres so they should have a little bit of shadow in each corner because they are round they are little balls in our head and it's really kind of weird um then we're gonna go back up to around like 10 i'm gonna make this brush a bit smaller and i'm gonna darken the crap out of their pupil make this like a little bottomless pit into their soul or this i don't know what i'm saying okay it's early i'm tired not really it's also not early it's like 12. and you want to make sure to avoid the white spots i always go in and lighten them just because it'll make their eyes look really shiny and that's a good thing for them to be really shiny And you want to make sure you keep the shape round. You don't want to like ruin the shape of her pupil and give her oval pupils. That's not what we want. And then when I have this size brush, I'm going to go in and darken any of the wider spots on her eyelashes just to make them stand out a little bit more. And then next, we're gonna zoom in a little bit more and I'm gonna use this brush and go around the outside just carefully. And I'm gonna stick more like right on the middle of the line, like having the line right on the middle of my brush instead of only going over the brown parts. And then you wanna darken the top a little bit more then you darken the bottom because there's supposed to be like a little bit of a natural shadow from your eyelid on the top of your eye and I feel like it gives the eyes a little bit more depth doing it that way and then again just go over back to the side. And if you see any bumps like how there was kind of like a little bit of bump making it not spherical just go outside and lighten it. Now we're gonna go in with we're gonna make this a little bit higher and we're gonna make this much tinier, tiny, tiny. And we're gonna go and we're going to draw little spikes. And these, again, don't need to be perfect. You kinda wanna do this quickly so they look more sporadic. You don't want them to be evenly spaced out or any of that, you want them to be random and go over some a little bit more than others, so making some look really dark and different lengths. You don't want them all the same length, so you wanna do some like shorter ones and then some long ones and just all different sizes. There should be more around in this area and in this area than in the middle of the eye, like in the middle over here, just because there's going to be more shadows here and this is how I add the shadows back to my eyes. And then just do the same thing to the outside and then leave like a dark line and then leaving this in the middle, you don't want it to be like completely black or completely dark. You want to have like a little bit of light in the middle around the edges, if that makes any sense. Just like, it's, you're trying to add depth to the eye. You're trying to make it kind of look more 3D, more like a donut is how I think of it. I'm trying to make your eye look like a little donut and you're shading it in to make it look more 3D. And again, every once in a while, just like add like a longer one or if your model has speckles in their eye, go in and darken those little speckles because it you don't want to completely take away from their actual eyes. You want to just emphasize what they already have and make it stand out more. And then we zoom out and we see how it looks and see how this just adds so much more detail and the eye is just crisp. As you can see, there's kind of like a little bit of an off shape in the circle right now. So I'm gonna go in and fix that. I'm actually gonna turn this down 
and I'm going to go in and darken right here just a little bit. And I think that should fix it quite a bit more. Yeah, there we go. And see how it just adds so much texture and depth to the eye than before where it was just brown. And then we're gonna go and do the same thing to this eye. It's just something that takes a while to get the hang of, but once you get the hang of doing this and you've done it quite a few times, you can go pretty quick. Pretty much everything in Photoshop, just take your time, go a little slower, figure out how you want to do it and everything. Like if you don't like doing all these little tiny lines, you can do bigger lines, but this is just how I like to do it. And you don't want to make the eyes look identical because eyes aren't really identical to each other so don't worry about making sure it looks exactly like the other eye because in real life eyes don't look exactly like each other anyways so and there we go and that's how i add depth to the eyes and i'm just going to zoom out to make sure i didn't get this eye too bright i think i did the whites on this one a little bit too bright so i'm going to go in and fix that just because i don't want them to look way too bright just gonna dole them down a little bit. This is in the shadow, so if it was if the whites were the same color in this eye as they were on this one, it would it would look a little off. That's a bit better. You can tell it's photoshopped, but it's not as obvious as it just was. And that's pretty much how I get the really glossy look on my photos. It's really just this layer and then a good dodge and burn layer. Like this layer does wonders. So I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna show you guys how I do the skin colors. I just do selective color and do reds and then I'm gonna add a little bit of blue, get rid of the magenta and add a little yellow. This is gonna look a little weird. Let's see, do I want more blacks or less blacks? I don't know. Label out reds, then do another selective color layer, and we'll do yellows and take away the cyan and also take away magenta, add yellow into the yellows. And I'm gonna add some black actually, I like that. And then the last one will be greens. I just wanna see what this does. I think I'm gonna take away greens. You wanna just play with these slider bars because there is green, there's there is green in our skin tone, and I, I'm mainly looking at the background right now because it is green. But I'm also checking out to make sure this doesn't isn't gonna make like your under eye like a crazy color. It's not really affecting too much. And some of these layers aren't gonna affect too much. And I like to put these in a fold together and scan CC for color correction. Don't really notice it until after I've made her more olive tone. It's just the lighting made her a little pink. So we're fixing that to give her back her olive tone skin. And then lastly, I'm gonna do a hue and saturation layer. And this one I'm gonna make pink and then change the mask to black mask. Go over to our brush tool, change the flow to be really low, change the opacity to be about like 50 some odd. Get a big brush, make sure it's on white. And then I'm going to paint over the blush and pinky areas because I want them to be pinky and less olivey, but I want her skin to be olive tone. That's just gonna add back some saturation and color to those cheeks. And then I think I'm actually gonna do one, and I'm gonna just bump the saturation up just a tiny bit. Let me see if I like that. Maybe like two. I always make sure to label all of my layers so I can tell what they are. So if I need to fix something or change something a little bit, I can go in here and figure out what layer it is that I need to go on and fix that. It just keeps everything so much more organized. And so here's the actual before. Here's with frequent separation, here's with the color adjustments, and here's with the dodge and burn. You can tell like I don't change too, too much. You could go in and change the color of the background, but I'm okay with this like yellowy green right now. I'm kind of digging it. I actually think the image is a little dark, so I'm gonna go in here to the adjustments and just make another curves layer and we're gonna bring up the exposure just a little bit. And that's a little too bright. It's easier to make this just a little bit more too insane and then take the opacity of the layer down than it is to tweak this curve layer to the exact precise exposure you want it to be. I just find it so much easier make curves that are kind of how I like it and then change the opacity. Maybe I just want to bump this up a tiny bit. Maybe I really want it to be this bright, but I think about like right here. Yeah, and I'm happy with that. And that's how I get that super glossy look on my photos. But yeah, hope you guys enjoyed this video. 
Um, I'm going to be doing a lot more editing videos since I have all the free time in the world with quarantine going on and I know I can't take photos right now so I'm going to be going through and editing a lot of old, old photos and just showing you guys how I do my edits. I might actually do some where I re-edit old photos and see if that's like kind of update them to my current style and see if that's interesting or not just just to see how my editing style has changed in the last three years because um, I was looking through old photos and in some of those photos I was like yikes okay let's go and fix that because it's a great photo and the edit is terrible so we're gonna be doing some of that and again I hope you guys enjoyed this video if you want to see any specific type of editing video or how to's in Photoshop or something I will try my best just let me know down in the comments or message me on Instagram I'd love to hear any suggestions you guys have or anything you want to see. And thanks for watching, guys. Make sure to hit subscribe and like this video if you want to see future content from me. Bye!